بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلى على رسول الكريم أما بعد. All praise to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who has given us this Deen, Kamal and perfection is to utilize our every breath for this Deen and for the revival of this Deen. The question is, we know about Deen, we know about Tahajjud, we know about Ramadan, we know about Quran. We know about abstinence and taqwa, but is knowing sufficient? We know how to make money. Is it sufficient to generate an income? So a person has a degree, he knows all the rules of making money, but making money is different from knowing how to make money. Somebody studied parachuting. He knows the entire manual, he's an expert, but when the time comes for the crunch, well, you jump and you know the skill of it, that's something else. So we know we are responsible for the hidayat of mankind, but am I fulfilling that responsibility? So knowing is not sufficient. Practicing on our knowledge, that is Kamal. Otherwise, externally it will be a display of deen, but internally there will be no deen. There was a king who had built a new palace, he was busy finishing the final touches. To perfect the design and look, he wanted to build a pond with a waterfall flowing with milk. So the pond was dug, the announcement was made, and the decree was that one person from each household in the kingdom should bring a bucket of milk during the night and pour it into the pond. The engineers did their calculations and forecasted that if every person in the kingdom brought, then the pond would be 100% to its full capacity. Even if 10 or 20% didn't come, which was expected, they needed 80% capacity. So night fell, everybody was supposed to bring their milk and proceed to the palace. So the first person was preparing his portion and uh, he thought about it, that let me substitute the milk with water, nobody will ever notice. So due to the darkness, he thought, so I'll get away with it. That's an opportune moment. He quickly looked for the opportunity, he went and he poured his water. The banquet was prepared, the day of the feast, the opening ceremony in the morning, the king came. They were ready and prepared for the ceremony only to find the entire pond was filled with water. What actually happened was everybody thought, so I have to put the milk, but I will replace it. Somebody else will do it. Nobody thought that it is my responsibility to stick to what I'm supposed to be doing. So you're wondering where's Dean? There's no Dean visible. Illa mashallah. And that that is visible as well. We have seen a Musalli, a person reading Salah. But is he actually a Musalli? Those people that establish Salat, those people of the Masjid, they are pegs of the Masjid. So we need to check ourselves, check our progress, stay far away from doubtful things and to be considered from the Muttaqeen. We say we have Taqwa, we have Deen. But are we engaging in grey areas? Some say it's permissible, some say it's not permissible. Remember that when there is an invasion, the border gets bombed first. Those people that are borderline, Iblis wipes them out first. So the first step is to look for ulama haq the muttaqi ulama, who make amal on ihtiyat and are very cautious on every aspect of their deen. We are handing our akhirah to somebody. We need to be very particular who they are. Usa bin Ayyun rahimahullah used to say, Al-Muttaqoon tanazzahu an ashya' min al-halal makhafata ay yaqaw fi al-haram fasammahum allahu muttaqeen. Why is Allah classified them as the muttaqeen is that they abstain and refrain from the permissible out of fear for falling in the impermissible. So Allah doesn't say don't commit zina, He says do not taqrabu zina, go close to it, don't be in any proximity to it. So a person stays far away from any avenue, any, any doubtful aspect, even the halal. So if there are two opinions, don't look for the leeway. If the ulama says sitter for the male is from the navel to the knee, then a person should, is not walking around every day like that saying, no, it's, it's mustahab, it's good. But he looks for at the need. So winter comes, he, uh, he wears more clothing, he dons more clothing. If he goes into a situation where there's compromise, a shootout, he wears protective gear. 
فقد اي شوت اوت وي ار ات وور وت ابليس اون يا عبد الله رحم الله يسي تمام التقوى ان تبتغي العلم ما لم تعلم منها الا ما علمت منها the climax the apex of taqwa is seeking knowledge of what you don't know and what you know so a person is traveling on a road to save his car he'll avoid a pothole if he sees nails he'll avoid it even more be more cautious if he sees a boulder so based on the obstacles on the road he'll make sure he'll avoid it there is a highway completely tarred and there is a another gravel road which is filled with bushes etc he will avoid that because he knows the risks we are on this journey to akhirah and the holes of jahannam are around us the holes of iblis we need to make sure we avoid it somebody came to maruf karhi rahimallahu and asked him that how can a person be a muttaqi when he doesn't know what he should abstain from so he said idha kunta la tahsin tattaqi akalt riba If you're not particular about what you need to avoid and you don't know, you haven't went to ulama, you don't study, you don't have this desire and shock for akhirat, when interest matters come, you will get engaged in interest because it doesn't bother you. You don't even know. You engage in that, take out your credit card, buy something on budget facility. If you do not have this taqwa, you will come across a female, you will chat with her, You will try to engage with her to to get into a situation where you comprise and breach a chastity. So you committing wrong, you 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 compromise in the situation. But a person forget lowering his gaze, he will even go further than that. Why that kunta la tahsin tataki wa zaat safka alat? That a person would put a sword will compromise. You know, there's precaution. A person has a sword, you'll cut your own neck. So. Taqwa is such way a person who knows about akhirat, he will worry about it. So each of the benefit and fawaid of taqwa is there so that a person, when you be employed for a company, you want to know what's the benefits, what's the 13th check like, is the salary for overtime, what's the, the, the salary like, what's the fringe benefits, is there a company car, etc. So making tilawat of Quran, doing every amal of deen, how it should be done. The 13th benefit is achieving wilayat and sainthood. A person will become the friend of Allah. What an honor that a person becomes the friend of Allah. In awliya'uhu illa al-muttaqoon walakin akhtharahum la ya'lamoon That the muttaqi people are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa What a accolade, what a certificate. One pious person was walking one day and a couple were on their way to the wedding. There was a water puddle and his foot fell into the puddle and the water flew onto the lady. Her clothing became soiled, she became upset and furiated and she started screaming. The husband didn't know what to do, he looked at the wife, she became upset with him and said, can you see what he done to my dress? The entire wedding is ruined now. And you just standing there watching. So he, he smacked the buzruk, the pious person. The pious person just looked down and didn't say anything. The husband just fell to the ground. The wife started screaming, you harmed my husband. You did this to my husband. See what has happened. What did you do? So the buzruk said in simple words, your friend hit me. So my friend hit him. My friend, Allah hit him. وَإِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ That the oppressors, their friends are the other oppressors. But وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah is the friend of the muttaqeen. أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلِيهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ That they will not have grief, remorse, regret. These are the muttaqi people. One sheikh relates that I he saw a young boy walking through the jungle. It appeared that he was uttering some words. I made salam. He replied, I asked him, where are you going? He said, to the house of Allah. I asked him, what are you reciting? What are you saying? He said, the Quran Park. He said, you're such a tender age and you are not obliged to do all of this here. 
He said, I've witnessed death approach people younger than me. Therefore, I would like to prepare when death knocks at my door. He said, your steps are small. Your destination is far. Meaning, you are so young. You've still got such a long life ahead. The young boy replied, my duty is to take the step and it remains the duty of Allah to take me to my destination. I'm traveling on a destination. I need to get there. No matter how small steps I make and how impossible it looks, that's not my job. So the Sheikh said, where is your provisions and your conveyance? So he replied, my yaqeen is my provision. My yaqeen is my provision and my feet are my conveyance. So the Sheikh said, I'm actually asking you about your bread and water. What are you going to survive on? You just traveling like this. He said, oh Sheikh, if someone invited you to his house, would it be appropriate to take your own food? He said, no. He said, simply, my Allah has invited me to his house. It is only the weakness of your yaqeen that makes you want to carry provisions. Despite this, do you think Allah will let me go to waste? He said, never. Then the youngster left. He said, when I reach Makkah to Al-Mukarramah, I seen this youngster, I approached him and he said, Oh Sheikh, are you still of weak belief? Are you still of weak belief? So that's Sifat, we have to inculcate while we have the life, while Allah has given us every breath. Another benefit of Taqwa is that a person's progeny will be preserved, they will be protected. وَالْيَخْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً ذِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا So people that fear of the offspring and are afraid, then hidayat is in Allah's hands, guidance is in Allah's hands. So Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam never had he died in their hands. Great, great Ambiya, Nu salam could not give his son he died. Lut salam could not give his wife he died. Ibrahim salam could not give his father he died. Nabi salam could not give his uncle he died. So tarbiya, hakiki tarbiya and islah, the murabbi hakiki is Allah. Let us link to Allah more than we spend effort. If if we make an effort on the ground, then 99% effort should be on the musalla. The story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam when he was traveling, أَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ Those two orphans and Khidr did an action that was beneficial for them and he explained وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا it was all about the orphans and a treasure beneath it. But what was the wisdom why Allah in His unseen system preserved this orphan's wealth? وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا The parents were pious. Ibn Abbas radiallahu explains, حِفْظًا بِصَلَاحِ Because of the piety of the parents, Allah preserved their dunya. If Allah will preserve dunya which is worthless, Allah will preserve their deen as well. So taqwa is a treasure which very few people have and that is a key and a remedy to Islam of our children as well. They say there was a man traveling to some distant place, he had no provisions etc. After traveling he felt very hungry, he came across a stream and he seen an apple there so he retrieved it. He ate the apple and after consuming he realized I ate it without permission of the owner. I need to seek the owner and resolve this matter. So he set out to find the owner. So for some days he wandered going from person to person until finally he came to an elderly person, a saintly person. And he addressed him. He said, Bil ams balakha bi alju mablaghan azeeman. I had reached hungerness to a great state. وَكَلْتُ tufah, And I ate, consumed the apple from your garden مِن دُونِ عِلْمِكَ وَهَذَا أَنَا الْيَوْمِ 
أستأذنك فيها I'm seeking permission for that one apple so the Huzruk replied Wallah لا أسامحك I will not forgive you بل أنا خسيمك يوم القيامة عند الله I will dispute this matter in front of Allah on the day of Qiyamah person became more grieved and said and shocked that what's going to happen to me uh, he said please forgive me he said on one condition بشرطن أن تتزوج ابنتي you marry my daughter he thought about it now I'm asking this person for forgiveness he just needed to forgive me now he's putting conditions then he thought so that I will have a dispute in the, in the, on the day of Qiyamah it's not worth it. So he said, agree, done deal. Then he said, one, but one more thing. وَلَكِنَّهَا عُمْيَا سَمَّا وَبُكْمَا She's paralyzed, she's deaf, she's dumb, she's blind. Will you still marry again? He thought so. Then he weighed his options. Akhirat, I cannot have anything against me on the day of Qiyamah. He said, done. So Buzruk was overjoyed and uh, dates was set. And uh, Nikah took place, he entered the room, stared at the girl, but she was most beautiful, stunning, elegant. He was baffled by her beauty and she was making tilawat of Qur'an. Her limbs were fine, her vision was fine. And he thought, this cannot be my bride. He retracted, went back to the Buzruk and said, this is a situation. I've entered the wrong room. He said, no, she is your bride. He said, no, she's not my bride. There's a beautiful damsel sitting there with complete lumps in, in, in physique, not as explained by you. So he replied, she's your bride because she was deaf to haram. She never heard any haram. She never seen with her eyes any haram. She never spoke with her tongue any haram. Her body had never went in any haram direction. That's why I said she's paralyzed. She was disabled from haram. You are a noble person and I wanted a noble son-in-law for my daughter. And the verse of the Quran where Allah explains, Al-Khabithatu lil-Khabithin wal lil Evil are for evil. وَالطَّيِّبَاتُ لِلطَّيِّبِينَ وَالطَّيِّبُونَ لِلطَّيِّبَاتِ If you are pure and you are chaste and you are good and exemplary, then you will get the exemplary. So Allah brought you here. The books, kitabs mention that this couple through their progeny, the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimallah, that was his mother, and father. So taqwa, piety, amal has his actions and has his consequences. Amirul Mu'minin Umar bin Khattab sent somebody to the bazaars to make alan. Ya ba'ya laban la tashubu laban bil ma. Don't mix the milk with water. So alan was made, but Umar went at night to go check and he said, Umar came to a house where the mother is telling the daughter that mix the milk with water. لا يراه عمر ولا منادي عمر عمر is not seen nor the proclaimer of عمر. And she replied, يا أمة ما كنت أطيعه في العلن وعسي في الخفاء. It's not possible that I oppose him if he is absent. Now that he's not sure, I can oppose him. In kana Umar la yarana, fa inna Allah subhanahu wa taala yarana. Allah is watching us. Amirul Mu'minin had this year. He made a note of it. He went to his sons and he said, "There is a beautiful proposal for you. And if you want anybody, so Abdullah ibn Umar and the other brother said no. There was one son whose name was Asim." He said, I will accept, and he was had exemplary character, he was a poet, etc. And the proposal was sent to this girl. And the result of this year was Umar Ethani, the Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the famous 
Umar al-Thani, the second Umar who was known as the fifth of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. The Amal for today was that if a person gives zakat, they should give it wholeheartedly and happily and not take it as a burden. وَعَطَى الزَّكَاد طَيِّبَةً بِهَا نَفْسُهُ That he should be happy and elated to give zakat. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا نِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ